On this episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast, we talk about when the kite string pops by acid bath. At no what, point on the record is there what, anything. What was that? That's my Pogo the Clown voice. Creepy. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Bronze Metalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. We're two professional broadcasters, and we like metal, and we like mm-hmm. to talk about it. And uh, today, we're <clears throat> going back to 1994 mm-hmm. for When the Kite String Pops by mm-hmm. Acid Bath. They're yes. a Louisiana-based sludge metal band, probably mm-hmm. uh, uh, while they were around, at least, the 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 biggest of them. There's The Louisiana sludge scene is... It's pretty prolific. I mean, it's... It's it's yeah. sludge metal is kind of a southern phenomenon, mm-hmm. generally speaking. It, it, certain like the first couple, I would say like the first three Mastodon records, and mm-hmm. by that I'm counting Call the Mastodon. Of course, uh, you could you could argue sludge metal for a lot of it, right? Because you know heat and humidity makes for some sl- sludgy metal. Absolutely, it, it does. Gets, you get the heat <laughs> and the humidity in in the metal and the in the record press, and it everything yeah. gets all goopy. It does. You you personally get all goopy i i lived in georgia for a while you, you feel goopy uh, i yeah i've only been uh, in the well i was gonna say i've only been in the deep south once but that was uh that's a lie i've also been to florida yeah although it wasn't the real southern part of florida and by that i mean it was the southern half of florida but that's not the southern part of florida that's you, not the southern part of you, florida. you were essentially in cuba at that yeah. point yeah the southern part of florida is northern is northern florida, florida. <laughs> the panhandle the panhandle that's the southern part of florida i know a guy who moved here from tallahassee he was in uh it was in october he moved here and he sits down at the blackjack table dealing blackjack at the time and he says oh man it's cold out there it doesn't get any colder than this does it i hate to tell you my friend (laughs) it's only going to get much much worse you see all these old people in shorts in here yeah that's gonna stick around for a little while longer (laughs) um this warm weather won't last long the other the other time i was in the deep south was was alabama and i Mm -hmm. like when we went to florida it was march so it wasn't quite so incredibly hot and sticky all the time Mm -hmm. it was actually like when it was warmer out it was actually fairly comfortable when i went to alabama it was the middle of june Mm -hmm. um and i was being a nerd because i was in speech and so uh we were all wearing suits for a couple of days the the rest of the time when we weren't at competition mm-hmm. we got to wear more appropriate clothing sure but uh we were i was wearing a three-piece suit and um i felt like i was going to melt into goop <laughs> you know that scene in the first x-men movie yeah. where that senator turns into water uh-huh that's how I felt. Sure. The the leading up to the point where he turns into water and he's like sweating profusely. Right. That's how I felt the whole day. The entire t- the entire time or just that day? Just, I mean, just the entire time, but especially those uh, two, three days, I think that we, we were in competition. Mm-hmm. Uh, the better you do, the longer you get to keep performing, sure. of course. Uh, we did not get very far. Uh, <laughs> Thankfully, or you would have melted. Yeah, I would have died. So <laughs> yeah. I guess I should be thankful for that. Um, you should be glad you you suck at speech. I should, <laughs> <laughs> I should be glad I suck at speech on a national level. Uh, okay, yeah. Statewide, very good at speech. Sure. I have the awards to prove it. As far as North Dakotans go, you are eloquence embodied. I was pretty goddamn good at it. Um, national level, I ain't shit. Yeah, and you were in Alabama. Yeah, so that tells me. <laughs> I wow. mean, that was it was a national tournament. It was not competing sure. against. It was not just a bunch of people from North Dakota <laughs> driving down to Alabama in just those two groups. <laughs> that would have been great. That would have been so bizarre. <laughs> no, it, it, it was. It was. Uh, there were people from all across sure. the country. North Dakota is kind of interesting as far as the way we at least used to do national speech. I don't know if things Mm -hmm. have changed since I graduated, but uh, uh, the way we used to do national speech is uh, all of the qualifiers from North Dakota Mm -hmm. would travel down together. 
Ah. Uh, we would all go together, whereas mm-hmm. most other states, it is a very individualistic thing. There's sure. no there's don't. I mean, we're not an official team, but uh, we're all on the bus together and we're all friends and we all, you know, we're well, all you're going from together. North Dakota. You know one another. Yeah. But yeah. there's only five people. You're here. from North Dakota. Do you know Fred? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, yeah. That's that's kind of how it goes. Um, uh, we would form kind of little tribes on the yeah. bus, basically, where mm-hmm. uh, the debate kids were in the very like in the very back of the bus. Mm-hmm. Um, being just uh, little pods by themselves, essentially, because mm-hmm. they had their noses and all of their debate material sure. and had no time to be social. Uh, and then there was the I guess the, there wasn't really many student Congress mm-hmm. people there because they're the three pillars of national the National Speech and Debate Association is debate, student Congress and speech. Uh and uh, uh, why are you laughing? I'm sorry. I'm just imagining somebody told this a podcast about heavy metal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure it is. It's, it's only tangentially about heavy metal. Here are the metal three pillars weeks. of debate and speech. This is, <laughs> it's only tangentially about heavy metal that, most weeks. That's, that's, that's a good point. You are not wrong about that. Uh, but uh, <laughs> anyway, so the the speech kids, we were, and this is the only time in my life this the term is ever really applied to me Mm -hmm. uh, we were the social butterflies oh sure uh that compared to some of the speech and debate like the some of the debate kids i guess they were very friendly they were just busy sure uh what the people that actually hung out with each other were the speech kids generally Mm -hmm. speaking uh and most Mm -hmm. of the speech kids were from western north dakota central Ah. and western north dakota why i don't know just because that's just kind of how it shook down and most of the uh or maybe not most of the speech, but it felt like a lot of, or at least the ones I knew the best. Mm. Uh, and in all <laughs> of the debate and student Congress kids were from Fargo. Ah, just sure. Fargo. Mm. There might've been some from Grand Forks, but I didn't talk to them. So I didn't know. Sure. But uh, like all of us were from central and Western North Dakota. It was, you know, a line, draw a, a line uh, due North and South from Bismarck. All the speech mm-hmm. kids were West of that. Gotcha. Basically. Uh, except for there was a couple, I guess, from Ken, not Ken Mayer. Um, Ken Mayer's west of. It is. But uh, the um, I'm thinking of there's a little town by Fargo. Fargo? Um, uh, w- Wapitan? No. No, it starts with a K. Oh, uh, oh, um, yes, I know. One of yeah. our uh, state senators is from, from uh, uh, Heidi is from there. Um, yeah, Heidi Heitkamp is from there. Um, I, I can't I'm, remember. I'm, yeah. She's not also no longer one of our state senators. No, she used to be. Yeah. That's been a couple of years. Yeah, and she was the state's attorney as well. But uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I can't remember the. God damn it. I can't remember the name of that town. But there were a couple of people from there that mm-hmm. went uh, 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 year after year uh, along with us from Washburn. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But uh, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that was that was I get <laughs> that was my speech story that I've probably talked about before. But uh, hey, you know we mentioned going to the south. How how have you been in the last week? By the uh, way, doing good. Um, I, I went for a few days without not eating. Yeah, you were maybe there were other things going on, but you were in a pretty poor mood on Monday. It seems yeah, to me. I was in I was in a foul mood on Monday. Yeah, uh, and I don't know if there are other things going on, but it seemed like as soon as I've got you to fucking eat something yesterday, <laughs> it seemed like you you were yeah. doing a little bit better yeah but uh, uh i feel like your mom sometimes where i'm just like eat something <laughs> my god you're 46 <laughs> you're 46 years old fucking eat something you are going to die uh, and i ate something i felt i had a big sandwich uh, you had a big sandwich uh, and today i watched uh, a new documentary with all with old footage called okay. get thrashed get thrashed yeah it's called and it's about the 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 birth and the growth of the thrash metal scene nice uh on and you know it's a movie from 2020 and all these dudes in there have black hair and blonde hair i'm like there's no way that footage is any (laughs) this is archival this is all archival footage (laughs) just popping up is that carrie king he has hair yeah oh yeah and no beard that, was there ever was there a period in Slayer where Kerry King had hair and a beard? Yeah, I mean he he often had like well a little more than five o'clock shadow. In okay, the early days. and then it changed to well I can't have long hair up here no more, so right. I'm gonna have long hair down there. Right, he's gonna <laughs> he's pointing to his chin. Yeah, just <laughs> for the record, Kerry <laughs> uh, King and his, and his majestic pubes. <laughs> have you ever seen a merkin? <laughs> It's like that, but natural. Oh, God. 
<laughs> oh, good lord! No, yeah, uh, yeah. Carrie King's ludicrously long beard. Yes, that's that's a uh, uh, like Scott Ian's. Scott Ian also, yeah, very yeah. long beard. Um, and I used to have that. The uh, I'm thinking of um, uh, there's a, one of the guitarists, or maybe it's the bassist for Fit for an Autopsy mm-hmm. has uh, a, a beard that maybe would make Carrie King blush a little bit in the sense that it Uh is tightly, it's usually tightly braided and hangs down about to his penis. Neat. uh, As it would seem. I've seen videos where he like throws his beard over his shoulder so it doesn't get in the way. Sure. And it's even though it's just one, you know, tight braid. Mm -hmm. And since it's so long, it makes his beard look very small Mm -hmm. because it's so long and tightly braided. (laughs) It's just like, there's beard up here and then zip. (laughs) Tiny beard could be like uh, uh, was it um, the character on Game of Thrones of the first couple of seasons with a ludicrous? Li- I should do I should do uh, 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 Sir Royce. Oh yeah, with the uh, super long mutton chops, <laughs> the, the mutton chops that hang you know hang down to my my nipples basically. Uh, <laughs> Did you hear that, ladies? Yeah, he's, he's gonna be hot in a few weeks. <laughs> A few weeks. <laughs> oh, sorry. Next year. Yeah. Next summer. <laughs> <laughs> Try three summers from now. Uh, and if I let the rest of my facial hair grow, I might have something might have, on yeah. my upper lip. It's not a mustache, but it'll be something. <laughs> that's the that's the biggest thing uh, right now is just like a, a decent mustache, mm-hmm. I feel like, can hold together a somewhat subpar beard. Mm-hmm. I do can't really grow a mustache to save my life so uh i've, I've always, mostly had always had a mustache yeah you have a very thick mustache i do you have a very thick goatee as well my womb broom here uh, <laughs> uh, now i'm just thinking of archer with uh uh, uh archer's mom getting <clears throat> mustache rides from <laughs> what the hell was his oh no i can't Burt Reynolds. There Burt, we go. All right. <laughs> Getting mustache rides from Burt Reynolds. Um, anyway, uh, have I been doing anything in the last week? I, I haven't done anything at all over nope. the last week. I've no, nothing been of note. Blessedly, uh, mm-hmm. maybe not blessedly. I've been bored, uh, mm-hmm. more or less. Uh, exciting news in the future. Okay. Uh, is that um, uh, uh, Legend of Korra is coming to Netflix. The, nice. The, you could sequel series. It's more of a spinoff mm-hmm. of uh, uh, Avatar: The Last Airbender. Uh, basically, what I've heard online is like a lot of people are not super fond of season two mm-hmm. of that, but the rest of it they say is really good, and also that you should not be expecting it to be a sequel to Avatar. Okay. It, Just it is, set in the same universe. Yeah, it's its own thing. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, mm-hmm. it's like sixty or se- it's like seventy six or something like seventy six years later, mm-hmm. and technology has advanced a ton because it's they've already got some impressive technology in in avatar in avatar you know the fire nation has tanks and shit Mm -hmm. uh so there's like cars and airships and planes and all Mm -hmm. kinds in radio and all kinds of stuff and then it's still in the same world of avatar so everything has you know is very asiatic and uh all these very distinct cultures and that Mm -hmm. sort of thing and uh, I I'm excited for it. I think it's neat. I've been I was kind of lamenting. My sister and I were texting back and forth last week, mm-hmm. you know, but because she started watching mm-hmm. Avatar entirely, you know, apropos of nothing at the same time I did. Mm-hmm. And she was like, Mom said you started watching Avatar. I just finished. It. I was like, I also just finished it. <laughs> and we were, we were complaining <laughs> about Legend of Korra not being on Netflix. But here it comes. It's on its way. I guess uh, Netflix was like, we'll give them some time. Mm hmm. With Avatar, which set records, I think, for it was uh, in Netflix's top 10 for 61 days, which is the longest anything has ever been in their top 10, which I think is very impressive because it's but it's not surprising, I think, because it's such a fucking good show. It is. It's a really good show. It's a great cartoon. It's a great cartoon. Uh, If you want to make people angry, call Mm. it an anime. (laughs) It's not an anime. It is a cartoon. It's an American cartoon. cartoon. Mm -hmm. It's just inspired by anime because the people who liked it are nerds. (laughs) Fucking weebs. (laughs) Weebs. Uh I don't know why I say that like Patrick. (laughs) (laughs) Nickelodeon cartoons making fun of anime, basically. (laughs) 
anyway. <laughs> like, moving forward. Yeah, it's, that didn't that wasn't gonna go anywhere. <laughs> I had no idea what that you were wasn't going really with a bit. No. I guess the, the only other thing that's that's coming up is uh uh gonna be going back to my roots as far as uh, uh role playing role playing games go. Really? Uh you have your safe word? Yes, I have my safe word okay, ready good. to go. It's uh no, apparently I didn't because I couldn't think of you one. You couldn't think of one. <laughs> uh, tapioca. Tapioca. It's tapioca. Uh, no, um, uh, uh, I'm going and playing a Star Wars D20 game. Right. Which I haven't gotten to play in <laughs> three years, something like that. Nice. Um, and it's uh, it was one of the first tabletop role playing games I played. The first one was mm-hmm. uh, Edge of the Empire, which is also a Star Wars. Sure role-playing game and then we switched over to star wars d20 the saga edition that came out after all the movies were done made by wizards of the coast mm-hmm. same people that make D. saga edition is basically uh, a third edition of dungeons and dragons but star wars mm-hmm. um so i find it very confusing because things feel similar and superficially look similar but are on a deeper level not the far same. more yeah. complicated um so after we're done tonight, uh, I'm talking to the game master and be like, hey, uh, help. <laughs> Need, Need help. help. Don't know how to make character. But uh, I'm excited. I'm my excited my first role playing game was Top Secret. Top Secret. Yeah. What's, what's that about? It's uh, basically it's just a, a spy role playing game. I mean, mm. it's. <clears throat> I'm see now I'm thinking of the uh, uh, the movie. Yeah, I'm thinking yeah. of the movie. What is it? The Val Kilmer, the Zucker Brothers. Yes. Oh, yeah. Zucker Brothers movie. Uh-huh. Uh, that's what that's what I'm thinking of. Think you think of a woman dancing ballet on top of men's bulges on a stage. <laughs> remember that scene? Uh, I don't remember that one. I do remember um, uh, Peter Cushing's giant eye. Yeah. <laughs> Because you think he's holding, uh, you know, this this magnifying glass up to his eye and is making sure. his eye look big. No, he's and just he has a really mag- big eye. <laughs> he pulls the magnifying glass away and half of his face is just huge and he's got this giant eyeball. It's fucking creepy as hell. <laughs> um, anyway, do we want to talk about Acid Bath? Sure. So Acid Bath, as we mentioned, they are a Louisiana based uh, sludge metal band. They got some doom metal in there, too, although pretty much any band that you can describe as sludge metal has some can doom also yeah. at times be described as a doom metal band. Mm-hmm. Um, they were founded in 1991 or were active from 1991 and sort of formed from a couple different bands mm-hmm. in the New Orleans mm-hmm. area, although all of Not them were the- kind of from they were from small towns south of New Orleans. Yeah, they'll never tell you they're from New Orleans, which is a very yeah. specific part of this country. Yes, it is. South of New, Louisiana, south of New Orleans is a is a that's might as well be the fucking twilight zone. To right. Me. And you, you think about it, though. I mean, New Orleans is on the coast. South New Orleans should be the ocean. But it isn't. It isn't. That's the thing yeah. about Louisiana. Uh-huh. It's not. <laughs> that's it's basically all of the, you know, little like flat areas around the mouth of the Mississippi mm-hmm. River, basically. Yeah, I have a friend who lives uh, down in that area. And he said, uh, now, when you come into town, I want you to stop at the gas station and give me a call. Let us know you're here, because if you try to drive your car into the bayou, you're going to get fucking shot. <laughs> <laughs> all right. You will get fucked and then shot. <laughs> yeah, that is like just south of this huge metropolitan yeah. area is the backest of the backwoods. Sure. Basically, is it, that's my impression of it based as mm-hmm. someone whose main experience with that part of the country is watching the first season of True Detective, um, which this album brought that to mind. So Did it much. really? For some, re- for some reason, because uh, I knew these guys were from Louisiana mm-hmm. and that show is... Um, Got a lot of drug use in it, that sure. sort of thing. There's a lot of, uh, <laughs> a lot of drug use by this band. <laughs> yeah, that as well. Uh, but we were talking about where they're from and mm-hmm. uh, where they came from. Uh, there were two different bands in that area. There was Dark Carnival, mm-hmm. which had uh, bassist Audrey Petrie, uh, Sammy Duet, Sammy Duet, yeah. uh, Duet, mm-hmm. uh, Tommy Viator, mm-hmm. uh, and there was another band called Gal. Uh, is it Golgotha? Gol- Golgotha. Golgotha. Golgotha, mm-hmm. uh, which featured the yeah Dax Riggs, who was yeah. the vocalist, Mike Sanchez and Jimmy Kyle, as well as a couple other guys. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a, a bigger mm-hmm. band than I thought it was. They're a seven piece mm-hmm. uh, or at least were listed as a seven piece. on. When they were here, there were a five piece. Yeah. I think there was maybe some some rotations or maybe some lineup changes. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Well, the final lineup is everybody except Thomas Viator, uh, who is the keyboardist and mm-hmm. currently left in, was only there from 96 to 97. Ah, uh, apparently yeah, they didn't he, have so a keyboardist when, when he, I saw them. He was not on the Kite String Pops, apparently, no. uh, when the Kite String Pops. Uh, those two bands kind of eventually dissolved. And then in 1991, they all got together and formed Acid Bath. Um, and they have a very distinct sort of style that mm-hmm. uh, blends like death metal and groove metal was kind of a thing at that point. Right. Uh, very mm-hmm. sort of groovy riffs every once in a while. Some weird time signatures and, <laughs> and key changes and stuff. Um, there's a lot of really interesting things going on here and it's all with, uh, uh, was it, uh, I can't keep on forgetting Dax Riggs is, yep. um, very, uh, poet. I mean, he has, his lyrics are poetic. They're mm-hmm. not nice. No, <laughs> they're, they're not clean poems there. It, it's like, uh. It's like dirty beat generation poems of mm-hmm. like this poem's about fucking. Yeah. <laughs> basically. <laughs> right. It is like that. That's what it reminded me of a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um and uh yeah, they're they're these are guys that you've met. These are guys in fact the album, this album I bought from the band themselves. <laughs> they were working the merch table. They were working their merch table. They bought it and I said, Well, you guys gotta sign it so my my copy is signed by all the band members nice do you still have it oh yeah nice uh i still have it i bought it for well i mean i got a call uh living here in mine had a band at the time and they and they called i said you want to open for a a metal band their call i said i don't care (laughs) i don't (laughs) don't give a shit just let's play a show please yeah please i want to play a show in the metal band and we showed up and uh and of course there were 20 people in the audience because because the, it, it was pretty, it was really a big punk rock scene here in my yeah. In, in it's the not metal. really a metal show. No metal it was a, scene. Was a metal scene, uh, but it was the punk rock guys that heard of you. Know, go on, book your own fucking life. Was his, the name of this publication <laughs> that that, uh, that a friend of mine paid to get and be on. Yeah, and they were also in this and. And they were coming here. We're a metal band. Oh, cool! And they called us. Hey, you guys are metal. You'd love them. And yep. uh, and we and them seeing the crowd of twenty people. Like uh, Sammy came up to me and he says, "Hey man, because we'd already played our our show." Yeah. Boo. Good night. And uh, <laughs> uh, and and he says, hey, "You're a pretty bitch and sounding rig. Uh, mind if I play through it?" I said, "You're high and you don't want to offload your equipment." <laughs> he says. That's that's accurate. Yeah, yes. that's true. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. For a crowd of twenty, yeah, I get it. Okay. I feel like if they hadn't like if they hadn't build Acid Bath as a metal band, they might there might have been people in the punk scene that would have liked Acid. Oh, Bath. they would have, and there were punk guys there, and they were like, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is cool. Well, because like Sammy. Uh, According to at least to the Wikipedia, would always describe their sound as gothic hardcore. Yeah, I mean, to me, this is very, very much metal, mm-hmm. but uh, I can certainly see the hardcore elements mm-hmm. in it. This is sludge metal is very much a fusion fusion sort of genre. Mm-hmm. Uh, there, you know, it's a, a lot of kind of slow, grimy punk mixed with slow, grimy metal. Yeah, and that's how it, it is. The um, it is the version of. Uh, if grindcore is on meth, mm-hmm. ass, uh, uh, sludge metal is on heroin. Basically, <laughs> that's the difference. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, there you go. That's that's very good. One is uh, you know dirty and grimy and gross and very high energy, and the other is dirty and grimy and gross and just sit in there going, uh, yeah. Uh, and uh, <laughs> as a heroin, I'm sure there was plenty of heroin that went around for yeah. acid bath. I, I know these the guys day. were smoking weed out back. I mean, I that's just your, them. That's, your tra- <laughs> yeah. that's your travel drug. Right sure, there. that is your travel drug. And yeah. And, and they said, is this tiny town of a strip club? I said, we're right behind it. <laughs> it's right over there. Yeah. You have a good night, folks. <laughs> Everything. <laughs> yeah. You should have just been like, even if it wasn't right over there, <laughs> it'd still be within walking distance. Because yeah. <laughs> my not. Because my not. Yeah. Uh, I wonder, like, that must have been an interesting, like, it, it, it. I would love to have a portal into that period of time mm-hmm. in in Minot in the metal bands that would come through and mm-hmm. play bars here mm-hmm. in yeah. metal bands that were from far flung parts of the country mm-hmm. that would play bars in Minot because the thing is is it's it's like how do you know that there's how did you hear mm-hmm. that you could play a show here how right. did you know that 
uh, right. who told you that you could play a show in this town? Well, I think that, I mean, there are, I mean, like I said earlier, the, there are publications that That's you can st- actually buy. I suppose. Book your own fucking life. I suppose. That's actually what it was called. And they just, <laughs> would they just have numbers for venues and yep. you could call the venue and be like, hey, we're coming through town. We want to play a show. Yeah. Are you, are you open for this night? Because we're going to be driving through. And we might as well play. Uh, there was a a punk band uh, that I went to a show to a couple years ago that was called Criminal Code. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have a neat little poster of theirs in my living room. Uh, and they were from Spokane, Washington. Mm-hmm. And were driving from... They were basically uh, on the home stretch of their tour uh, and going from New York to Spokane and sure. driving across basically the northern edge of the United States... Uh, and played a show in in Minot, and they I think their next tour date was in Spokane the next day. The next day, yeah, that's a schlep. They drove, as I understand, they drove through the night from Minot Ugh. into Montana. Oh God! Probably by sunrise, maybe hit the Rockies. Who knows? Oh, that's they, horrific. Yeah, no, that's <laughs> it. Sounds positively horrendous because I is. think it's it's probably it's six seven hours maybe to to hit the mountains in Montana. Yeah, yeah. Until you hit Montana, it's it's fence post, fence post, fence post, fence post, fence yeah. post. That's well, all you got. You know, if you've never yeah. been to Montana and you're driving into it from the uh, from the eastern edge, you might right. be thinking like, "I'm about to hit Montana mountains. Here we come." No, you're nope. gonna have to wait a little while, yeah. buddy. It's gonna be a bit. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be a bit before you see any real change in elevation. Uh, mm-hmm. And or like, like I went to the. I was surprised when I went to like the Little Bighorn uh, 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 battlefield, mm-hmm. uh, and that looks like any fucking ranchers field in north dakota basically sure. it, it's slightly it's got slightly more elevation but it it reminded me of like south of uh south of mandan like fort lincoln mm-hmm. which was also a place where custer stayed but uh uh like fort lincoln that area there's a lot of hills and buttes and bluffs and that sort of thing it's mm-hmm. not mountains and for some reason in my head i thought of little bighorn as being a much more dramatic scene no but it's a grass field no it's just some hills <laughs> yeah. some grass and a ton of really stupid people died there oh yeah. <laughs> well they weren't all really stupid custer no. was really stupid uh but uh, uh anyway yeah that like i i just i love mountains so much yeah i hear you i that was like the first time i think i'd really been in mountains i was like 16 at that point mm-hmm. but uh, we had you know every time we'd really went places it was either oh we're in the city mm-hmm. we're not going to be really be going through the mountains we're just like we went to denver mm-hmm. but you don't really need to go through any mountains to get to denver the closest thing was the black hills which right. i was impressed by but then we were going to yellowstone and we went to yellowstone through over uh uh the uh, beartooth pass oh, okay and then down into uh yeah. there's a little tiny town in wyoming there i don't remember what it's no, called jackson hole no no that's uh that's south yeah jackson hole is, is south by of the, the grand, tetons yeah that's by grand teton yeah. um but we were we we're driving you know th- through there uh and i remember on the way up it was just like wow this is this is you actually you go up <laughs> a change in elevation wow 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 uh but anyway we're very far off topic uh how did that how did the show go that night for you guys I, uh for us we, we played a set we played our music we played yeah we played <laughs> that's kind of the mark of a of a a small band is like yeah. how did the show go we played we played we so played. pretty good there were people in the audience yeah we played music for people so I've, I've actually played shows to no people. I've done it before. That's basically Did just a practice. <laughs> that's basically just a practice session uh-huh. that um, I guess you played for a bartender. Play for a bartender. You I played, played for, for a bartender. bartender. Yeah. Did you get was it? I mean, I'm sure it was a thing where, you know, you only get paid based on how many people come in. You didn't get paid for that show, did you? No. No, I, in fact, most of the shows we played uh, outside of North Dakota cost us money. Yeah. Uh, like, like there was one uh, bar, it was called The Strand in uh, Moretta, Georgia. And uh, uh, and you, uh, they said, yeah, we'd love to have you play. We're going to have a bunch of bands playing this night. Here, here's a bunch of tickets. Um, we need you to bring the money back for these tickets and then uh, you can play on the stage. We don't get to keep the money? No, no, you got to give the money to the to the venue and uh 
Yeah. Oh no, we had to certain to sell a certain percentage of the tickets and bring that money to them, and anything on top of that we could keep. But so, it was like, but we didn't sell enough to to cover it. It was cost. basically the venue version of a MLM. Yeah, yeah, basically, and it cost us money to be on stage that night. We recorded oh, it. That was our only live recording of a show, and I broke a guitar string, and I didn't have another guitar. <laughs> So Again, I, the market of a small band. Yeah, yeah. I, I only I didn't bring a spare. Like, hey, can I borrow a guitar from somebody? And they had to go out in their car. And I, <laughs> and I stood on stage and told a story for 15 minutes. See, I just like the <laughs> idea of you standing on stage, no guitar. Uh-huh. Everyone else in the band just kind of standing there like, <laughs> mm-hmm. all right, we're waiting. We're waiting. It's just... <laughs> I'm a comedian now. <laughs> I mean, that's what Devin Townsend does when they oh, have sure. uh, when they have technical problems. Is just mm-hmm. well, it's just Devin's comedy hour, and that's fine because he fuck he's fucking funny as hell. Wait, which it's funny. Uh, the 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 documentary I saw tonight uh, they had strapping young lad uh, interview, and it wasn't Devin Townsend talking. He had the the skullet. So this is yeah. quite a while ago, and uh, no, it was. Um, um, the drummer, it was uh, Gene? Gene. Gene. Gene Hogland. Gene was doing all the talking. I mean, why not? Yeah. Might as well. He's very erudite. I, mean, I feel like maybe since it was a thrash documentary, they probably wanted to talk to Gene because yeah. Gene was more in the thrash scene. Gene was in the scene. Gene I mean, was in the scene, yeah. I, Gene, I well, feel Devin, like, is more closely associated with that. Yeah. De- Devin's kind of on the outskirts. Yeah. Heavy Devi. He he's uh, he's mostly been a, a progressive sort of mm-hmm. uh, in that scene, at least the, from my point of view. Anyway. Yeah, G- Gene was in Dark Angel, which is a, yeah. an important band. So that's they probably wanted to talk to Gene, and and he was a roadie for a, a little band called Slayer. Uh, yeah, Slayer mm-hmm. drum tech. Yeah, a little band called Slayer. <laughs> that's how I'm gonna say it from now on. Slayer. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so was uh, was this the that show the first time you had heard Acid Bath? I'd never heard of them before. You'd never heard of them before. And I'm like, this is great. And now a good friend of mine, his name is Buddha, uh, lives in South Dakota. He, they're in a already sounds like an incredibly interesting guy. A very interesting. Uh, I watched him murder a mouse one night on acid. <laughs> uh, I- <laughs> I never know how these stories are going to go. <laughs> I shouldn't. I shouldn't be surprised yeah. when you say shit like that anymore. But I still am. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It was called Cola. Little mouse named oh, Cola. It was his mouse. It was his pet mouse. It wasn't loved, a mouse. It was his mouse. It was his pet mouse. He was holding it in his hand, and and the mouse he thought had turned into a horrible, hideous monster. He threw it on the floor and stomped it to death. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Buddha. I mean, the guy. He, Acid, kids. Yeah. Don't try it. Not even once. Well, may, maybe, maybe once. Maybe yeah. try it. Yeah, in, in a and safe environment. Yeah. <laughs> we shouldn't be advocating for the use of psychedelics <laughs> on this show, but. <laughs> yeah, he actually has Buddha tattooed on the side of his head. Does he shave his head? Uh, quite often, yeah. I remember one time he how, was. How is he a big gentleman? He's a, is he a large? He's fairly gentleman? large. Okay, he's a he's a, he's a round fella. That works that works for he's, me he's, then. He's, if he's, he was a skinny guy with a shaved head and Buddha tattooed on right. the side, I'd be like that person's on meth. <laughs> I'm sure he was at one point. <laughs> yeah, he yeah he lived with a dude named Taco for a while. So Buddha, Again, Buddha and Taco lived Buddha together. Buddha and Taco. And they were selling lots of weed. And I'd, I'd go over to their house occasionally, and I'd knock on the door really heavily. Open up! Oh, and then they hear all sorts of shit being hidden. Just goes, just me, dude. Sorry, it's me. Oh, fuck you! <laughs> I just felt like being an asshole. <laughs> I wonder what my neighbors think when we do this and they hear you shouting random shit. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, you don't hear them shouting random shit? No, not really. Not fuck you and open up after yeah. knocking on a table. I don't hear that. Yeah, because uh, I remember Buddha was staying with the, when my first wife and I uh, we had an apartment, and he was staying with us for a while. And then uh, and eventually, I got around to saying, "So, what are your plans? Why are you crashing here? I didn't even ask you. You just said you could." And he said, "Well, I'm probably going to go turn myself in. Now. I don't want you guys to get busted for aiding and abetting." Jesus Christ! Oh, all right. <laughs> did you ask what he did? Oh, I knew what he did. What did he do? Oh, he was selling drugs. Oh, okay. It was just, it was just sort of his general activity. Yeah, it's just, just selling drugs. Just him being him. I mean, he's he's my he's forty six now, and he, he's a grandfather, and he lives in oh, South wow. Dakota. And forty, I, 
I, for some, there was a second in my brain where mm-hmm. I was just like, oh, grandpa at 46, that's normal. But then I was just like, oh, well, I mean, it happens to plenty of people. Sure. Could happen to you any day a, now. I have a 25 year old daughter. Yeah, could any day now. You could be a grandfather. 17 year old daughters. You could be a grandfather. Not going to happen. Are you ready to be grandpa, OJ? I'm, I would love to be a grandpa. Being a father sucks. <laughs> You being a grandpa, that's great. That's great. You, you get sick of the little asshole, you give it back. <laughs> I wonder if that's how my dad feels. <laughs> my my dad is very very fond of kids. Basically, yeah. like, he, like anytime there's a baby, my sure. dad is just like, oh, he turns like even before he was a grandpa. Mm-hmm. It's just like my dad. My dad is. A very gregarious guy sure. and so he's very he's very good with children uh then there's me on the other hand where i'm just like yes you are a child yeah i know i recognize your status <laughs> as a child, as a child. Uh, it's mostly it's mostly babies like my mm. my oldest nephew now is like since he's no longer fragile and uh-huh. will you know break at the slightest thing i can now rough house a little bit sure and uh, uh, pr- fulfill my duties as an uncle more fully. Sure. Uh, uh, Whereas before they handed to you, it's like they handed you fine china. Like, uh-huh, like, uh-huh. <laughs> this is a Fabergé egg of a human being. Please <laughs> take it away from me. Which is funny because that's at the stage of your life where you are the most resilient. You could have slam dunked that child. It would have been fine. <laughs> that's a decent point. Yeah. It was kind of funny because uh, uh, a few months ago, uh, we went, I, I went down and I hadn't, it was when, it was when we actually had a, a, a nice lull, lull in cases of, uh, of the COVID. Uh-huh. Uh, so I went down to see my parents and the, in the mm-hmm. kiddos were there. Uh, and he, we were on this old place that my dad built years and years and years and years ago. Uh, and there's a, a bar over the top of the the slide, this plastic yeah. slide, uh-huh. and he was standing underneath that bar, and he throws his arms up to, in some sort of celebratory <laughs> thing, and hits the sides of his forearms yeah. on the bar. Yeah, and uh, I go, ow, and I'm like, oh, did you did you know did you hit your arms? Yeah. And then he, he looks at his arms and go, I did hit my like he didn't say out loud, I did hit my yeah. arms, but you could see in his head he was going, I did hit my arms. That hurts. I'm going to scream now. <laughs> It was like, I should have just not said anything yeah, you and have would have out. been fine. Yeah, he'd have worked it out. Something in the back of his head would have been, some kind of hurts, but whatever. Ah, it's probably fine. Yeah. But as soon as I let him know, oh, you should be experiencing a yeah. pain reaction right now, he started screaming. Yeah. And that was the next 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, you poor thing. I have the same reaction whenever I'm in a public space and I hear a baby screaming and I'm just uh-huh. like. It's only going to get worse, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> you just wait till they're in their teens. It's only. And for I'm, the record, I'm not I, saying it's only they're only going to get worse. Yeah. I'm saying things, things are only going to get worse oh, for sure. them. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Now everything's great. You just don't know it. Yeah. You got a titty to suck on. Mm-hmm. You got, you know, people take care of your every need. You can right. shit your pants whenever you want. I mean, that's where I'm at now. <laughs> uh <laughs> no, but <laughs> and for the record, I love my children. Yeah, just wanted to say that. No, OJ despises no each and every one of no, his children. I do not. None of them. They're all wonderful. They're all wonderful, mm-hmm. except for you. Yeah, and you know who you are. <laughs> oh God. Uh, um. But yeah, the the only bad thing about getting old because uh-huh. it's a lot of the other. It's like people tend to your every need. Sure. You get to shit your pants whenever you want, but you don't necessarily <laughs> have a titty to suck on. So. Yeah. If I you mean, play you, your cards you right. Mi- you might. <laughs> yeah, sure. You might. You know, there's a lot of VD going on in them nursing homes. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Uh-huh. They're, they're, I mean, that was an episode of Parks and Rec. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> We've gone horribly off topic uh, once Show again. Show us the banana! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so does this album slap? Oh, yes. I believe it slaps. I, I would say so as well. It doesn't always slap, but no, most I mean, of the time it slaps. It, it has, let's use the D word here, it has dynamics. Yes, I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a dynamic album. Yeah. That, and that's the interesting thing about each song is like the the riffs will kind of grind to mm-hmm. a halt and then change right and that's like the 
This, you couldn't dance to this. Yeah, you could dance to parts of this. Sure. There are some very groovy sections, and then after about 30 seconds of that, it's going to go, yeah. and it's going right. to change to something else, and there's no way you can do a, no. a physical transition there that will look natural. I mean, even Dax's vocals, he goes from screaming to instantly crooning. Yes. He goes from crooning to screaming to crooning. This is su- this <laughs> album is such an interesting yeah. mix of genres because his his... His clean vocals are yeah. very grunge. It, it, very it is grunge. There's very, a lot very of phaser grunge. on them. Yes. Of, yeah. There's a lot of effects on all of his vocals. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of phaser on that. Uh, his screams, on the other hand, are very... All of his vocals remind me of Corey Taylor from Slipknot. Really? Yeah. A little... Because if you if you hear, you know, some like like Stone Sour or something, sure. you know, Corey Taylor's other project right. where this, this is pre-Slipknot. This is yeah. pre-Slipknot, but I'm wondering if like how big a, an influence Acid Bath was on them. Obviously, Slipknot is usually quite a bit more energetic than Corey, Acid Corey Bath Corey didn't mention to be. it in the uh, the documentary tonight. He didn't mention Acid Bath. He didn't mention Acid and, Bath. And by the way, Corey Taylor with long curly locks. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. That's a look. Yeah. Uh, apparently there was there was rumors in 2014 uh, that Acid Bath was going to get back together. Not going to happen with Corey Taylor, and they're like, "Why with would Corey we? Taylor? Yeah, and and not with Dax. Everyone involved was like, "No." Uh, and the main reason that they said no was we're never going to be a band again after Audi, Audi's dead. Yeah, so. after and that was what ended the band. Right, the car crash. The, their bassist uh, and his family, his whole family. Yeah. What got in a horrible car crash with a drunk driver, mm-hmm. and only his brother survived the crash. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, that was that was the end of the band. They called it quits. Yeah, he right was the there, backbone basically. of the band. If you listen to it, there's a lot of oh, great bass guitar in there. Great bass on here. Um, but we were t- we were talking about Dax's vocals. His mm-hmm. his screamed vocals have a lot of uh, distortion on them. Yeah. Um, which was a thing in the 90s. Mm-hmm. It seemed to be like in and up until, you know, maybe the early 2000s is like, let's put distortion on these already very distorted vocals, because <laughs> uh, that's like early, very early. Um, uh, don't use my fucking folding oh, knife. That's folding knife. That's folding. I thought that was- <laughs> he was about to use my fucking folding knife to open up a beer bottle. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. um but uh, uh, now that like the like early Converge records, there's mm-hmm. all distortion on Jacob's vocals. Right. Um, and uh, early Every Time I Die records, sort of the same deal. Although Keith Buckley attributes that to him not being a very good vocalist at the time. <laughs> and so this was just a way to make him sound a little bit more sure. impressive. Put a lot of effects on it. Just put, <laughs> just put some distortion on uh-huh. that. And when we're playing in concert, I'll just hold it real fucking close to my mouth and tell the front of house guy to turn the gain up. <laughs> And we'll get the same effect, basically. He could just get a, a HM2 pedal and sing through it. <laughs> oh, that mo- that would be interesting. That would be interesting. I want to hear I've, that. I've done that through my cabinet. I've uh, sang because I was the singer in our band. Yep. I've sang through the cabinet before. Oh, with distortion. boy. Yeah. That's got to be interesting. It's pretty cool. I want to. I want to hear that. I probably have heard it and just didn't know necessarily that's yeah. what was making that effect. Mm-hmm. Probably heard it at some point. Someone's thought of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that was a that was a thing uh, in like the the metallic hardcore scene of the mid to late nineties of just like let's put distortion on these vocals, right? And, and to, it like <laughs> the production is already shitty enough, so <laughs> let's just hide the imperfections with effects, sure. essentially. Uh, which works. We've got eighty dollars with the recording equipment. <laughs> Let's put some distortion on this shit. Yes, <laughs> uh, make it sound intentional. Yeah, <laughs> and that was like that was. It's a weird difference between metal in the eighties and like metal in the nineties. Mm-hmm. I think is like metal in the eighties. The stuff that some of the stuff anyway that sounds shitty mm-hmm. is because it was recorded on a shoestring oh, budget. Sure. But everyone was everyone was trying to squeeze as much. Uh, definition out of it as they could and right. as bands got more popular mm-hmm. they kept on getting higher and higher definition sure and, and then in the 90s there was a trend of let's make this sound like shit on purpose right and i blame mayhem for that <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah i mean they they had a lot of influence on that i mean yeah the, the, the lo-fi sound i mean now you can record an album on your iphone and it sounds great yeah i mean so. but back then you were recording on tape <laughs> you were recording on a fucking like uh baby monitor you yeah. <laughs> bought at i recorded on tape our, our first album was recorded on 
on t- and they made us a CD and charged us fifty dollars to burn a CD. Wow! Because because CDs that's not this something. Was, this was this was the master copy. It had special. They had a special CD burner. That instead of it never just being one of these before in your computer, right? Uh, <laughs> that was not a thing at the time. That was in nineteen ninety four. That the interesting thing about that is like. You know, we had to have a separate CD burner uh-huh. separate from the computer. Yeah. And now you don't even have a CD player on your computer right. because you're not going to be using CDs, mm-hmm. uh, which is like I I don't think I even have a, a, a mobile CD player. Does this computer? This computer definitely does not have that a, does not have a CD. Yeah, player. it for sure does not does have, not have an optical drive. as they yeah, call It does yeah. not have an optical drive. Uh-huh. My old Matt broken MacBook that's still sitting over there did have it was the last edition of macbook as i understand to have a cd player in uh-huh. it, or cd drive mm. uh in it and uh, uh i was happy that it did because i got some use out of it sure um but i have, uh, I have starcraft on cd somewhere in my house starcraft <laughs> also no well i was going to say also known as uh uh rip off warhammer 40k but uh that's sounds very negative yeah it, it, it i don't <laughs> I don't mean to sound like an asshole for that. Mm-hmm. I think that was actually more of a Warcraft thing. Warcraft and Sark were both Blizzard. Yeah, it's both properties. Blizzard, but like Warcraft, I can't start talking about this. Anyway, Games Workshop <laughs> was like, hey, make us a video game. Yeah. Uh, after our Warhammer stuff. And uh-huh. Blizzard was like, okay. And then eventually it didn't work out. And so they were just like, we already have all these assets. Let's just change some of the yeah. stuff and make it call it Warcraft instead of Warhammer. Right. And Starcraft was kind of the same thing of like, we've right. got these space marines what if we make them look a little bit different what if we make these space marines space rednecks and that's <laughs> that's what they did that's how you get starcraft yeah starcraft is just like well there were three species in starcraft yeah then all the terrans are space rednecks yes uh which i think is, uh, is so such an inspired sort of decision like yeah. they're all fucking cigar chomping uh, tobacco right. chewing rednecks <laughs> and they spawn they're like Yee-haw! yeah it, <laughs> It's such an interesting choice. Yeah. Anyway, uh, the score that I found for when the kite string pops is mm-hmm. 85. This was not a critical success when it came out necessarily. Right. Well, they were selling it by hand, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> this was, I mean, yeah. I think it was a critical success for the people who would like it anyway. Yeah. Um, nowadays, I think something like this would get more widely seen, but this was very sure. much an underground hit that mm-hmm. has gone on to be, or I won't call it a hit. It was an underground critical success. Yes, it was a darling. Uh, and uh, has gone on to be sort of a, a legendary album in the mm-hmm. sludge metal scene. I feel like maybe uh, uh, Pagan Terrorism Tactics sold maybe better, a but that's because they were already well, more well-known at that time. Yeah, I didn't really read a lot about uh, Pagan Terrorism Tactics, but uh, mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I think I might have to check it out. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I thought this was real neat. What's your favorite song on here? Uh, I got to say Tranquilized is my favorite song. Song. That's a good one. That's a very groovy song. It is a very groovy song. I went with God Machine. Oh, God Machine, yeah. Uh, uh, I also was a I was a big fan of the instrumentals on Jezebel. Yeah. Uh, as we've discovered in previous yeah. sort of gothic themed albums, uh-huh. there's something about really sexualized lyrics that bothers me just yeah. a little bit. <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> she screams bloody murder as they chop off her fingers. Oh, this is how it feels to die. Yeah, it, it, it's, <laughs> it's part of that just bother. It has to be. If it's going to be lyrics like that, it has to be so incredibly heightened as to be in, in like like forced gender reassignment by cattle decap is just ridiculous. It's you can't so take that ludicrous to heart. Yeah, that I am perfectly fine with that. But when things sound a bit more genuine mm-hmm. in a way. I, it it, it uh, uh, disturbs me a, li- mm-hmm. a little bit, and I, it makes me a bit uncomfortable. Sure, just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but, a, uh, lot that, of people, a lot of people really love this song, um, um, uh, The Scream of the Butterfly. Scream of the Butterfly is interesting because yeah. it's all acoustic guitar. Yeah, acoustic guitar and bass. It could, yeah, and bass. Uh, but it's, it's that's, there's a, two songs like that? That's yeah. It's Scream of the, the Butterfly. The second last song, what is the second And The last? Bones of Baby Dolls. Yeah, Bones of Baby Dolls, right. Uh, those are both uh, mostly acoustic songs, mm-hmm. which I was not expecting going into this after, you know, after the first uh uh, what is it? The first five songs. Right. Uh, I was not expecting like, oh, this is just six minutes of just acoustic guitar mm-hmm. and, and singing. But it's most, mostly bass. I mean, if you notice that, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's audio playing there. Yeah. But uh, 
It's, it was nice. It's a, it's a palate cleanser, a nice mm-hmm. palate cleanser as you're going through an album like this to mm-hmm. have a, a track like that. And I appreciate it. <laughs> Thought I had to burp, but I don't. So now I'm just uh, uh, sounded so, weird. Uh, <laughs> well, there, there we go. go. All right. I got it out. I got the Bill Clinton out of my system. Good job. Um, so uh, what metal are you bestowing upon this album? Like Maz Kanata to Chewbacca at the end of the 2019 film, The Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> <laughs> directed uh, by jj abrams <laughs> uh okay this album is very near and dear to my heart is a very important song to me or important album to me uh so i give it a gold a gold i think i i i'm it's on the upper end of silver for mm-hmm. me mm-hmm. um it's intrigued me and the the nice thing i don't know about nice thing i'm sure it would have been great to have more music from them but the yeah. the uh, acid bath listening to the entire acid bath discography <laughs> be two albums can be yeah. A, <laughs> yeah is a more compact experience sure. than uh next week's band uh which is not a compact experience if you were to listen to <laughs> their entire a discography. It's experience if you were to listen to one album. It's not a compact. None of what they do is compact. That is it's very drama. true. <laughs> uh, it's summer, so uh-huh. I figure maybe we might as well make it a, a tradition that at some point in the summer, uh-huh. we listen to a Dream, Dream Theater, Theater album. Yep. Mm-hmm. So next week, uh, we're going to talk about an album we've talked about on this podcast before, but I haven't talked about with you before, right. which is Metropolis Part 2, mm-hmm. Scenes from My Memory, which is my favorite Dream Theater album. Okay. I believe it's their best album. Um, I, I adore, I love it to pieces. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I'm excited to force you to listen to it. And uh, oh, that's cool. And uh, talk about it next I'm week because it's that. a it's one of those albums that where I'm so familiar at this point <clears throat> with the concept of it mm-hmm. uh, that it's it's easy for me to talk about because it, it's also one of those albums that has a concept that's a little bit easier to follow. There are some con concept albums sure. where the lyrics are so incredibly inscrutable that's like mm-hmm. how the fuck. Would I know at all what this is about without watching interviews with the band? Sure. And if you have to watch interviews with the band to form any sort of idea of what it's about, mm-hmm. then then I think maybe it fails to be a concept and it's just sort of a nebulous feeling mm-hmm. instead of a, a story or a concept. And maybe that's my mm-hmm. failing as a, as a listener of not being able to form to better able to form my own opinions uh-huh. about things or my own idea of things. But uh, I like it when things are a little bit easier to a little bit easier to understand a little bit, especially in a musical setting mm-hmm. versus a movie where all you have to go by it is the sound. Make things just a little bit more clear sure. for me so I know what you're going for. Or give us lots of pictures. Yeah. J- yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's that's another thing that yeah. I as someone who now uh, likes to collect vinyl records, mm-hmm. that that is an option that is open to sure. me of like, hey, I've got this in and they have an art book in the, sure. uh, you know, in, in the mm-hmm. within the slip cover. They have an art book of, you know, uh, pictures relating to every song. And that's cool. Uh, that's awesome. I think that's very cool. It's a, it adds a lot of value to a, a vinyl record that I think is is very neat. So uh, I think like um, the the copy of Jane Doe that uh-huh. I have the <clears throat> I think anyway that I th- I know at least the CD mm-hmm. the lyric book for the CD uh, had basically each page was an individual piece that Jacob Bannon had done. Sure. And I think the lyric book, I think there is a lyric book in my copy of Jane Doe that has that in there. I might be imagining that, though. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, next week, Metropolis Part 2, Scenes okay. from a Memory by Dream Theater. It just makes me uh, think of, uh, I threw a party at my mom and dad's house when I was uh, 18 years old, a kegger. Mm-hmm. And my mom had first printing Beatles albums. One was the white album with the original poster in it from 1968. Okay. All stolen. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> It's the one thing they can't replace. <laughs> Jam me the bottle opener. Oh, uh, sure. Here you go. <laughs> he tried to hand me the knife. <laughs> I'll open you with that. I'll open your ass with this I'll knife. I'll open you. Ugh. <laughs> open your ass? <laughs> Nasty. Uh, so until next week, uh, mm-hmm. you can find us on Spotify. Spotify? No. No. <laughs> until next week, you can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. We post new episode links there if you uh-huh. want to listen to us in your browser 
Or if you are a more modern type sure. who wants to listen to us via an app, we are on Libsyn's app called the Podcast App for uh-huh. your Android device, or we are on your podcast app for iOS. Indeed. So go do that. Give us a subscribe. Yeah. Give us some ratings. Uh-huh. I'm sure you could do that somewhere. Or, or, and you know, we haven't said this in a long time. Send us five bucks and we'll say your name. <laughs> Remember? I don't have any way for people to send there's us no way, money. There's no way I would have to happen. send that. I would have to set that up. Yeah, yeah. For people to send us money, get messages some on some some sort of device and say, "Hey, what's your address?" <laughs> I'm you not can, giving strangers my address. You can mail or personally could, deliver with a I gun, could, a five dollar bill. I'm sure I could just <laughs> set up. I'm sure I could just change a setting on my personal PayPal. Sure. I still don't quite feel like doing that. All right. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> thanks for listening to another episode of the Bronze Medalist Podcast. I'm Kale. I'm OJ. Congratulations. Congratulations. The empty bottle. Yeah, well, because this one is almost full. Sure. All right. (laughs) All right. All right. Okay, whatever. All right, whatever. I guess I'm the asshole. (laughs) You heard my, my fuck up today, didn't you?